Scott Faulkner. He is the former chief administration officer at the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, Mr. Faulkner, your perception of how this campaigning for the Republicans and the Democrats is uh, trudging along? Well, if it was a rational world, Trump would be winning by a landslide. But it is not a rational world. We have 94% of the American media is totally uh, being a propaganda arm of the Democrat Party and of the Kamala Harris campaign. And unfortunately, a lot of voters may, may only be exposed to that propaganda. So that's why the race is tight. Thankfully, as one of your other uh, guests just said, Republicans, after decades of not doing the right thing, are finally voting early. And that's they've already exceeded the numbers of Democrats in Florida and in, a, and in Georgia. And that's a good thing. But we still have a few days left. There's the lies that are coming forward to attack Trump. They, they're bringing up that he's a Nazi and a fascist and all that. And unfortunately, unless you're watching Fox News or watching or, or, or following conservative social media, uh, the truth is not coming out to a lot of voters. So this election is not over yet. Uh, Kamala Harris is a chronic liar. I mean, she's lied about everything, including her own demographics. She's lied about her entire career. She's lied about everything uh, in her policies. Her running mate has lied about his entire career. Those lies seem to be permeating parts of the electorate, and that's why this election is still close. Okay. Uh, talking about, you know, the attacks and the counterattacks, now Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, there have been the former chief of staff of uh, uh, Donald Trump when he was the president, call, call him fascist uh, dictator. Uh, uh, do you think this, this, this sentiment is resonating with the average American as well? I think it's resonating in certain parts. I was actually on the phone last night with somebody who, because I just voted yesterday, we have early voting here in West Virginia, and they were, and they're a very knowledgeable person. They were going on and on about how, how could I vote for Trump? He's a Nazi. He's a fascist. He'll be the dictator. He'll bring in the military to go after uh, Americans. I mean, so there are people out there who truly believe that. I mean, he had been president for four years. We didn't have a dictatorship under under Trump. We've had far more attacks on on individuals and political opponents under the current uh, Biden-Harris administration. Okay. Uh, talking about domestic policy, politics versus uh, foreign affairs, pub, uh, public policy, foreign policy. Now, uh, there, has, uh, there has been a lot of, uh, uh, you know, conversation happening and reports pouring in that Kamala Harris might not be the right fit because she doesn't have the experience. She has been working under the shadow of Joe Biden and she's not gotten anything on the table uh, uh, as, as, as uh, her portrayal as the next president of America. But do you really think it really matters in, 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 in domestic politics, whether what's happening in Ukraine or, or, the, or, or in West Asia or, or with China? Very few American elections pivot on foreign policy. I mean, 1968 is probably a perfect example because of the Vietnam War. But otherwise, and certainly 2004 and the af aftermath of 9-11 and the, and the counterterrorism efforts, but otherwise, most Americans vote their pocketbook, as they say. And as one person said a couple of elections ago, it's the economy, stupid. And Americans are hurting. The inflation rate, I mean, things are anywhere from 20 to 30 percent more than they were four years ago uh, at the store. And so people see that. And people see Tr uh, Trump as a person who oversaw low inflation, oversaw high employment and saw a booming American economy until, until COVID hit. So he leads by large margins on those issues, and that probably is what will bring him across the finish line. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the popular perception that Kamala Harris is the woman, is the candidate who is uh, rooting for the middle class, while, while Donald Trump with his corporate tax cuts and other initiatives is, is only pitching for the wealthy of the country. Well, again, these are this is where you know reality and rhetoric are two different worlds at the moment. That if you look at who benefited the most under the four years of Trump, 
versus who's benefited the most under the three and a half years of Biden-Harris. The middle class benefited far more under Trump. His tax cuts were far better for uh, the, the middle class. His proposals to uh, not tax Social Security payments, to not tax tips, to not tax overtime for first responders. I mean, these are huge issues. I mean, the fact that many unions in America are, are either endorsing Trump or not endorsing anyone is unheard of. And these are indications that once you get out of the media filter, which is totally left wing in this country, the reality is a lot of people are falling in line behind Trump because they see him as their future. But taking a look at the economy in the last four years, obviously the world and United States of America have uh, have faced the burden of COVID. Uh, but uh, you know the inflation is 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 now under control in America. Uh, uh, the GDP is is uh, coming back to normalcy. There have been several Fed cuts, but that has not impacted the way economy is functioning. Uh, should the, the, the should the issue of COVID also be kept into consideration uh, when you are judging uh, the economy, the state of affairs, uh, when Biden administration was in power, uh, because because COVID, COVID was an anomaly, it, it, it's a calamity that has happened and, and nobody had control over it. Well, the key is here that inflation is not under control. I mean, the fact is, is that prices are still going up. They're just going up at a, at a lower rate in part because Again, you know, if you have a $10 bill and and it goes up by one dollar, they know that's 10% inflation. If you have a hundred-dollar bill and it goes up by two dollars, that's a two percent inflation. So the fact that prices are much higher than they were four years ago, and the inflation rate really is not the case, it, really not relevant because it's it's again it's being put against a much higher amount of money to begin with. People go to the store and they know what they were able to spend a year ago or even three years ago on a basket of food and what they're having to spend now. And it's dramatically higher, especially for very specific goods. People see that. They vote their pocketbook. And that's the one hope that people that that Trump has is that people are going to see the economy for what it is. The statistics are always fake. I mean, the number of times this, the Biden-Harris administration has had to readjust employment numbers, unemployment numbers, uh, even inflation numbers. I mean, they play with the numbers. And so, therefore, the numbers that are put out by the federal government are always suspect. Okay, so why do you think uh, Donald Trump's immigration policies and the campaign that he is revolving around immigration and talking about how these immigrants uh, eat eat the cats and dogs and pets of Americans, why is it resonating with the people? Actually, if you look at, at some of the polling, he is trusted far more than Harris on, in, on, on the whole issue of immigration. Again, let's divide it down. No one in America is against immigration. People, I mean, we're all immigrants, but illegal immigration, and that's the name, and, and that's where the Democrats and the media keep conflating that they they try to lump it all together and say we're against immigrants. No, illegal immigrants, people who are already breaking the law by being in this country. We have gangs, the Agua group out of Venezuela, the MS nine, MS thirteen out of the Central America. I mean, you have gang activity. I mean, I live here in West Virginia, a fairly rural state. We have MS-13 happening right here. We have human trafficking happening right here. We have drugs and fentanyl happening right here. It's The border is now all 50 states because these gangs, I mean, what happens is people come across the border, they pay money for the cartels to bring them across the border, and then the cartels require them to pay that money back. So the gang members are in the enforcers to the other people to say, you haven't paid yet, go and, and uh, shoplift. You haven't paid let, paid uh, back, you know, put your wife or your daughter in, into human trafficking. Mm -hmm. You haven't paid, you know, become a drug dealer. I mean, these are things that are happening every day. Crime is going through the roof. Gang activity is going through the roof. And so these are things that are affecting Americans and they, again they trust Trump 
more than Harris on this. Okay, all right. On that note, I thank you, Scott Faulkner. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.